Okay, so you've hopefully been hearing all about the ways that I manage my time generally as a CEO, but right now I wanna tell you about how I manage my tasks because there's a big tool that I use when I manage my tasks and it's called a bullet journal. I've been bullet journaling for how many years now? I guess four years, since 2018. So this is these are the bullet journals that I used for 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. And now that it is 2022, I am putting together my bullet journal for 2022. This is the one that I'll be using and I'm excited about it, but I wanted to show you the bare bones bits of it because I'm not your average bullet journaler. I'm not the one who kind of does all the doodles and the fancy stuff and the colors. It's very minimal, very straight to the point. Uh, but I appreciate it because it's different from just having your own planner and buying something that someone else made for you. You can create this on your own. And I've gotten so used to it over the last four, now fifth year that I've been using the bullet journal that I still use it even now as a very busy CEO who has a lot of tasks. So let's dig into this bullet journal and how I've been able to organize it. It's like a little sticky here. How I've been able to organize it over the last uh, few years and what's worked for me. So I'm showing this to you today because it has nothing in it yet. We're actually before the new year right now. I, it's December 2021 right now and I just set up my 2022 bullet journal. So I wanted to make sure that I filmed this now before there's a bunch of stuff in it and I'm apprehensive about sharing it with you. At this point with it as blank as it is, I'm totally happy to share all of it with you. So let's jump right in. Let me take the camera and show. All right, so to start, I always do a year at a glance page. That's exactly what you're seeing right here. It's literally just a, a calendar of the year and I'm 31 years old. All of my bullet journals start with the year of because my birthday's in December. So basically the whole year is the year of that kind of age that I am. I then put together a future log and here you can see what my future log looks like. If you're unfamiliar with the bits and pieces of a bullet journal, I definitely highly recommend you look into each of those pieces from other creators who have all of that set up for themselves. Um, I'm just gonna give you a full gist of what this looks like. So here you can see that I have space for the important dates that happen within each month. I also have space on the bottom for birthdays and that's where I put all the birthdays ahead of time of the people that I care most about and whose birthdays I want to make sure I remember. And so this is the rest of the year. And then we go right into my 2022 highlights. So this page right now you can see the bleeding through into the previous page and whatnot, but these pages will have pictures and different highlights from the year. That's kind of how I like to pay attention to the things that happened and celebrate them. And then here I have some goals and values. So on the side here, I list my values. And then in these boxes, I list my goals for the end of the year and then for 2025. I've been planning toward 2025 for a while. Um, it's just a, a year that feels like a very solid year to plan toward. So I'll compare my values and my, my goals rather from the last bullet journals and I'll put them in here. And that's part of the goal. Then on the next page, I have my morning and evening routine. I plan on doing a video about that at some point. So hopefully you'll see that. Um, I also have a section here where I put sticky notes. Um, and here you see it says shopping list, but sometimes you can have a bunch of random things. And you'll notice that I mess up throughout this process and it just is okay. Um, that's part of having a bullet journal. And when, you, when I mess up, I usually just either put a little mark there, like kind of like exit out, or I'll put a sticker over it. So that's what that was. I messed up underneath that sticker. Now the next page is a bunch of email, uh, rather, mailing addresses of people that I care about and whose email addresses I plan to use to send different gifts and little notes to. I have a section for my personal list of email, or I don't know why I keep saying email. I have a section for my personal mailing addresses, and then I have a section for the professional mailing addresses of those who I really want to make sure I send things to and keep in touch with. And then I have another page of that because there's usually quite a bit of that going on. 
And then we get into our monthly spreads. So every month is a different spread. I have it kind of marked off here by this washi tape that I have. And this is what January looks like. And every month basically looks the same. So I have the month here all laid out and eventually I'll put all of the important dates and you know information all up here and then I'll have my notes on the side. Uh, so if it's like someone's birthday, I'll transfer that over from the future log over to this page. Or if there's an important event that I have, I'll mark it here just so that I'm keeping track of that. And then on the next page, I have a habit tracker. These are different habits that I'm really looking to make sure that I capture. And then I have a gratitude log. So every night I like to make note of some of the gratitude or the things that I, I'm grateful for. I don't always fill, out, fill this out every night, but it's still really helpful to have. I also have a section for quotes, although historically I've shifted it over to be about goals. So here you can see quotes, goals. <laughs> so we'll see what that ends up being. And then I also have a section for where I talk about or share into this journal what my moods are throughout the day. This is something that's been really a staple in my bullet journal since 2018. And it's something that I've worked on just in my therapy sessions, really being cognizant of my moods and my feelings. So this is a kind of more thorough mood journal than maybe you've seen in other bullet journal spreads, but I'll indicate in the little square what my mood is based on this key. And then I'll explain why I'm feeling that way. And it's helpful for me to look back and try to manage, you know, okay, here are some parts within the month or within the year when I felt a certain kind of way. And then on this page, it's kind of bleeding through, but in this page, you can see that there's a brainstorm se section. And this is where I literally brain dump whatever I want. Then moving into the weekly spreads. So here I have the traditional weekly spread, which includes a place to enter all of the important must do tasks for those days and a place where I put the events that are on deck for that day. Um, so these are where I put, maybe there's like a dinner that I have to go to on Wednesday the 5th. And so I'll write that in here. Maybe I'm meeting up with a friend or maybe I have an important conference that I'm going to and there's some important kind of happy hours or networking events within those days. That's what I'll write there. Obviously here's the weekend. And then throughout the week, I like to have a place for my meeting notes. Sometimes they spill over and this isn't enough space for my meeting notes. And that point I, you know, try to, find a different part within the bullet journal to get my notes down, but this is often enough space specifically for the big, the big hitters. Next, we have a task list, and this is in the bullet journal for every week that I have in the bullet journal. And usually each of these columns are listed with different important uh, categories, whether they be clients or business development or supporting the C Network team my team. Um, I'll have that listed on the top. Usually the bottom ones are related to different announcements that I have to make to the team or related to something personal that I'm a project, personal project that I'm working on. Um, sometimes they're related to recurring meetings that I have with certain client contacts. And so that's what will go down here. And I also have a system where I'll do something like I'll have a box and that'll be my checkbox. And if I don't get to something that week, and it's something that's relatively low priority, I'll put an arrow on the box and then I'll just transition it over to the following week. So at this point, we're in the, week, the weekly spreads, which means that every week looks the same and has both this page and the task page. So that's basically it. I hope that was helpful. Truthfully, I love bullet journals and it's really how I manage all my tasks. My team knows. Um, they they see me writing in it all the time and know that I'm putting down all the tasks that I have and I'm trying to keep to keep up with all of them. So if you are new to bullet journaling, I highly recommend that you take a look at some of the creators who have gotten really a lot of traction on their YouTube channels because that's all they do. I again am super simple with it and am really uh, an example of how you don't need to be super fancy in order to get the most out of your bullet journal. So. Hopefully that was helpful. That's how I manage my tasks.